This video will have flashing lights throughout. Alright, let's do this. A while ago I was contacted about displaying video through my oscilloscope interface modules. After answering the questions, I was asked if I could make a Eurorack module that interfaces with a LIDA compliant laser projector, as there was an out of production module that there still seemed to be some demand for. I would never heard of LIDA or the Eurorack module with that interface before, so I did my research and it appears the original LIDA interface module has been out of production for some time. So I said yes, I'll do my own version of it, if for no other reason than I wanted one for myself. First thing I needed was a laser projector as you can't develop a module with no way to test it. A quick trip to the usual online retailers later, and here we are, a laser projector. Looks like the UPS man had his way with this package. There's something loose rattling around on the inside. I'll have to get that out before I can proceed. And look, a screw. Actually, two screws. Now I need to take the top off and see where these screws came from. Looks like here and here. You ever wondered what the inside one of these cheap laser projectors looks like? Here you go. Well, the standoffs the screws were into were completely stripped out. So no threading like cross-threading, as they say. Next size up screw worked good enough. Now let's see if there's something I can do about this bent plate. To the vise. Well, it's never going to be perfect, but it's a hundred times better than it was. And it works. This is just part of the demo program included on the SD card. And well, for $172 delivered, I'm impressed. I'm sure the more expensive units are better in every way, but for what I want to do, this is perfect. Now to build the module that interfaces to this thing. I needed to get some DB25 connectors. And two days later, these showed up. You think these are new production? Or are there so many DB9 and DB25 connectors made in the 1980s that we are still using new old stock to this day? And of course, the standoffs and nuts to secure the cable to the connector are sold separately. Now to design the module. I found the LIDA standard free on the internet just by searching for LIDA standard. LIDA is an analog way to command a laser projector to an X and Y position and set the intensity of the red, green, and blue laser generators. Also, there's an interlock and shutter signals to act as safety features in the event of the DB25 cable becoming partially unplugged. The other signals listed on the DB25 are not needed to control the laser projector, and on a cheap projector like I have, probably not even implemented. First thing to do on designing this module is to lay out the faceplate. The DB25 connector is obvious. The five signals used to control the laser, X, Y, R, G, and B, each have their own CV input. The first row of potentiometers controls the influence of the control voltage on each respective channel. The next row of pots is for the DC offset for that channel. The X and Y can be used manually to steer the beam, or more commonly, to get it centered where you want it. The R, G, and B provide a way to dial in a minimum level of brightness for that color. And the X and the Y also have an invert switch to reverse the polarity of the signal if that's what you need to achieve the desired effect. This last pot in the center scales both the X and the Y signals at the same time from 0 to 4.7 times the level of the input control voltage to change the size of the projected image without needing to adjust the scale of the X and Y inputs independently. The last two switches here control the shutter, which supplies a 5 volts to pin 13 of the DB25 connector, and the interlock, which connects pin 4 and 17 together when in the up position. Now let's look at the circuits to drive this module. This is my interpretation of what the LIDA interface module should be. I know there's the out of production module that does the same thing, but I don't have access to one or to the schematics, so this is wholly my own design. Here's the entire schematic. It may look complex, but there's a lot of repetition across the analog channels. Let's start with the power connector, standard Eurorack configuration. Voltage rails connected to the op-amp chips are done in the standard way as well. I needed a positive and negative 5 volts for this module, accomplished that with some Zener diodes and resistors. 
don't need a lot of power on either one of these voltage rails. So it's lower cost than using a 7805 and 7905 voltage regulating ICs, and the accuracy is good enough as well. The DB25 connector, the X, Y, R, G, and B signals are connected to the appropriate pins. I decided to ground the inverted inputs of all the signals just in case. This might not be needed. The shutter switch connects here and the interlock here. Unused not inverted signals I just left open. The RG and B circuits are all the same, so we'll just talk about one of them. CV signal comes in here. Because this is a 0 to 5 volt only input, this diode blocks any negative control voltages. Then the level of the CV input is controlled by this potentiometer here, with a DC offset controlled by this pot, a small capacitor here to stabilize the color level of the beam. This might not be needed. This op amp is set up as a non-inverting summing amplifier. The 100 ohm output resistor is for current limiting, and this Zener diode makes sure that the voltage output can never exceed the light of specifications. Though the specification says that the input device should be able to tolerate plus minus 12 volts on any pin of the DB25 connector, I don't want to chance anything. The signal then goes off to the DB25 connector here. The X and the Y signals are both identical, so we'll just talk about one of them. Control voltage comes in here, CV level is controlled by this potentiometer, a DC offset is controlled by this pot, non-inverting summing amplifier. This is a unity gain inverting amplifier. The signal from the inverted and non-inverted amplifiers is selected by this switch, which is then sent to this two-gang potentiometer, one half for the X and the other half for the Y. This gives scale control of the output. This final non-inverting amplifier stage with a gain of 4.7 gives more dynamic range for weaker CV sources. Before the output signal is sent to the DB25 connector, it passes through a 100 ohm resistor for current limiting and these diodes clamp the signal to the plus and minus 5 volt rails. Now to build it, starting with laser cutting the faceplate from hardboard. Fresh off the laser, let's see how we did. DB25 fits perfectly. Jack's good. Switch is good. Pots? Well, the pots are too close together. And this is why I love prototyping with hardboard. Slight adjustment, and 10 minutes at the laser later. With 50 thou more spaces between the pots, a perfect fit. Now let's get all those parts mounted to the faceplate. I know how I usually etch PCBs, but I'm feeling a regular solder card for this project, as the circuits are not really that complex, and there's a lot of connections to the faceplate, which an etched PCB wouldn't really save any time doing.
And there we have it, a finished module. Let's put it in the rack. I need to screw this one down, as the DB25 cable really wants to wag the dog. And that's when I got no output from the laser projector. I checked everything over in the module with the oscilloscope and I couldn't find any problems. So there was nothing to do but take the laser projector apart and see if the problem was there. After an hour of probing around the unit with the power on, I found all the signals were present and appearing to go what looked like the main control board. I figured at that point it would probably wasn't a problem with the analog signaling of my module was doing. Then looking around the PCBs for any clue, I noticed one of the unused headers was labeled K1. Probing it with the oscilloscope, there was 5 volts on one pin and 0 volts on the other. I thought, this looks like some kind of input. And when I jumped it, hey, it works! Dancing laser beam. Off camera, I soldered a bridge across this connector to enable the LIDA connection permanently, as this is how I'll be using this projector. Now, let's run some voltage for some LFOs through this and see what kind of effect we can get. This effect is actually a lot better in person. Now with the sound of a bass drum. Well that's something anyway. Well there you have it. Hope you really enjoyed this journey I went on to make a Eurorack LIDA interface for a laser projector. Let me know in the comments if you think this is a module you'd be interested in. I know it's been a while since my last video, but I do have more on the way. Hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.